name is Kate Homery, and I'm a choral scholar at Second Presbyterian Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm also a graduate student studying musicology at the Indiana University Jacobs School of Music. Today, I'm here to talk to you about French composer Louis Vierne. Chances are that if you hear church organ repertoire somewhat regularly, you've heard the music of Louis Vierne. He's one of the most famous organ composers of all time, steeped for a lifetime in the French organ tradition of giants like Charles-Marie Vidor and César Franck. An esteemed teacher, Vierne helped train another generation of great French organists, including Marcel Dupré, Maurice Duroufflet, and composer teachers Lily and Nadia Boulanger. Louis Vierne's accomplishments are particularly impressive given the many health challenges he faced in his lifetime. Due to a congenital cataract condition, Vierne was nearly blind for most of his life. Despite his poor eyesight, he became one of the most respected organists of all time, going on to take the position of organist at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, France. Yes, that Notre Dame Cathedral. But to explain how he got there, we have to go way, way back to the beginning before Vierne had even begun his organ studies. Louis Vierne was born completely blind in the year 1870, but by the age of five, a few surgeries had helped restore his sight to the point at which he could, quote, get about, recognize people, see objects at a short distance, and read large print at very close range. In today's day and age, we would probably refer to Vierne as legally blind. Vierne's uncle took note of his musical talent immediately, but his organ studies didn't begin until he heard a church organ for the first time. Quote, I thought it must be sorcery. The variety of timbres, the sustained sound, the magical effects of softness, crescendo, and power filled me with a mysterious terror and also with the desire to play that miraculous instrument myself, end quote. At the age of 10, Vierne's family moved to Paris where he began studying with a blind teacher at the Institut National de Jeux Aveugles, or INJA. The INJA was the first school for the blind ever and served as a model for many other schools for the blind that would be founded in the coming years. One of the INJA's most famous students was in fact Louis Braille, the inventor of the Braille system that would eventually allow the blind to read, write, and communicate more than ever before. Louis Braille himself was an organist and would eventually devise a system of Braille musical notation that Vierne himself would use in his later years. A year after Vierne began his studies in Paris, his uncle took him to see the organ at Saint-Denis du Saint-Sacrement, where Vierne's love of the instrument continued to grow. Quote, what a revelation! I needed no other inspiration, and the phrase, when I am an organist, recurred like a leitmotif in every conversation in which I took part. But that same year saw the first of several personal losses that would affect Louis Vierne's life and career. In July, his uncle became ill and died of pneumonia. He wrote in his memoirs, quote, I have devotedly kept alive the memory of my uncle, a modest man with a heart of gold and an intelligent artist who passionately loved his work, end quote. In October, Vierne became a residential student at the Institut National de Jeux Aveugles, where he received a well-rounded education in the arts and sciences. In 1886, Vierne played for a jury presided over by César Franck, but just a month before he was due to perform, Vierne's father died of stomach cancer. Vierne was 15 years old at the time. Despite this challenging loss, Vierne walked away from the competition with first place prizes in piano and violin. César Franck sent for Vierne after the competition and told him he would be happy to take him on as a student as soon as Vierne was ready. In 1890, Vierne became a student at the Paris Conservatoire, studying with Franck until his teacher's death in November of 1891. Franck was succeeded by Charles-Marie Vidor, Equally impressed by Vierne's hard work, Vidor asked him to begin teaching classes to auditors that same year. Vidor also asked Vierne to sub in for him at Saint-Sulpice. According to Vierne, this opportunity was a great reminder that, quote, joy does not always come without terror, end quote. Vierne continued to work at the Paris Conservatoire for about 19 years, teaching students such as Marcel Dupré and Nadia Boulanger. In the spring of 1900, Notre Dame's organist Eugène Sargent passed away after over 50 years in service at Notre Dame. After receiving nearly 100 applications for a replacement, it was decided that the new organist would be chosen by way of contest. This was not a simple contest either. It was intense. Competitors would play four items for the jury made up of all of Paris's best musicians. First, an accompaniment and embellishment of a liturgical chant. Next, an improvisation of a fugue on a given subject. Next, free improvisation on a given theme. And finally, a memorized performance of one out of five organ pieces submitted by each competitor. Jury's pick. 
The entire process was anonymous. The judges were seated out of sight so that they could not see the contestants and vice versa. Competitors were assigned numbers in order to maintain their anonymity. When the details for the competition were released, four people immediately applied. But Vieren was not so quick to throw his hat in the ring. He had a lot of things going for him. Recently married, new father to a four-month-old son, and a lively career already set up for him. Was now really the time to redesign his whole career? But at the encouragement and haranguing of his teacher, Björn finally gave in and applied for the position. Each applicant was given eight hours to practice on the organ at Notre Dame, but Björn was only given two since he had played on the organ a few times earlier in the year. On the day of the competition, Vierne drew the number one slot and was ushered into a small room in which he was given some of the necessary materials for the audition. The jury randomly selected J.S. Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor, a piece that Vierne later called, quote, marvelously suited to the organ of Notre Dame, end quote. Whether it was the choice of repertoire, the organ itself, or just plain talent, Vieren received a unanimous first place prize, making him the next organist at Notre Dame. He would keep this post for the remainder of his life. Björn's career certainly was accomplished, but his work is even more impressive when you consider the circumstances in which he lived. Despite his success, Björn often struggled to make ends meet financially. He was passed up for the position of organ professor at the Paris Conservatoire, and his salary from Notre Dame was barely enough to cover his medical needs, much less support a family. He split from his wife in 1909. His personal life was also fraught with bereavement. His little sister, his uncle, his father, his dearest teacher, Vieren carried the weight of so many losses. To make matters worse, World War I also brought on the death of his brother and eldest son. Vieren was also a very sickly man. Continued operations to preserve his vision and subsequent medical complications took both a physical and emotional toll on the organist composer. By age 50, he was also experiencing acute neuritis in his right arm, making it difficult for him to play without pain. And yet, among all of these tragedies, Vieren continued to compose. He toured internationally, giving recitals to help balance out his income and raise money to repair the organ at Notre Dame. Vieren also kept his position at Notre Dame for over 35 years. On June 2nd, 1937, Vierne was set to give a concert at Notre Dame with his pupil, Maurice Durofle. Vierne arrived to the concert in a ghostly state, despite his doctor's best efforts. Vierne played only half of the program before dying at the keyboard from some sort of cardiac event. Eyewitness accounts recall his foot falling onto a low E pedal, letting out one final ominous note as he passed away. Vierne wore many hats throughout his life teacher, student, composer, organist, father, husband, and touring musician. He was also the teacher and mentor of some incredible organists to come, including Nadia Boulanger, who would go on to become the most important music educator of the 20th century. Despite serious personal and physical tragedy, Vieren continued to make music through the good times and the bad, in sickness and in health. Vieren is remembered not only for his beautiful organ symphonies and his stunning improvisations, but for his tenacity in the face of personal crisis. He is a much needed reminder to all of us today that a musician's love for their craft can help them overcome seemingly insurmountable obstacles. Vieren's story is one of strength, perseverance, and victory, and he lives on in his legacy as one of the greatest French organists of the early 20th century. Thanks for watching.